Welcome back to H20, special relativity. In this section, we want to build on, we just learned about the relativistic Doppler effect and redshift. So we take on traveling through the galaxy from here, from Earth, towards the center of the galaxy. The situation is as follows. We have Bob, who's stationary on our planet Earth, and Alice, who makes use of a new spacecraft. That spacecraft is able to travel with a velocity of 0.9999999998 times the speed of light. So that's really fast. It corresponds to a gamma factor of 15,000. Now, the center of the galaxy is about 30,000 light years away. And in Bob's reference frame, this journey will take about 30,000 years because the velocity is about the speed of light. For Alice, however, the journey will only take two years. So it's quite doable. The question now is, what does Alice see? Literally, what is she going to see while she is looking out of the windows of her spacecraft? Is the picture similar to the one we see in, in some of the movies where, you know, there's on the horizon, there's dots of stars. And once the spacecraft accelerates, you see those dots kind of blurry coming towards the Earth's stripes. Or is the situation somehow different? The starlight has a wavelength of about 600 nanometers. And the cosmic microwave background uh, wavelengths of 1.06 millimeters. So how is Alice going to observe those two light sources in her travel? So I invite you to work this out, but also think about the next question. How long does it take for Alice to accelerate from zero to her velocity with an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, which is 1G, which is very, very doable for her? Okay, so I invite you to stop the video here and work out those numbers to get a feel and speculate a little bit about how this journey is actually going to look like. So here's the solution. So the light's moving towards us, so it's going to be blue shifted. Uh, the velocity is given here, and with beta, we have seen that redshift or one plus redshift is equal to the emitted wavelengths divided by the observed wavelengths. And you find that that factor is 10,000. So we just have to divide our emitted wavelength by 10,000 and find that the observed starlight has a wavelength of 0 0.6, 0.06 nanometers, which is X-ray. So she's going to be flooded by X-ray as light coming from the stars. And similarly, the observed cosmic microwave background is going to be about 106 nanometers, which is ultraviolet light. So the ultraviolet light, and there's a spectrum to this. So what she's going to see is X-ray, which she can actually not see with her eyes, but she will be able to see the ultraviolet or some part of the spectrum as a kind of a blurry, fuzzy kind of background uh, all over the place. So the situation is actually different from what we just saw in this picture. A few more fun facts about the cosmic microwave background. It's actually at a temperature, so, um, the spectrum of cosmic microwave backgrounds, those photons, they correspond to a spectrum emitted by, um, uh, this, which is corresponds to a specific temperature of 2.7 Kelvin. That is the temperature of our universe. This temperature was about 3,000 Kelvin, about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the age of the universe at the time. And the, then at that time, this corresponds to visible light. But at that moment, the light stopped interacting or stopped. Um, the, the likelihood for the light to interact with something out there in the universe became so low that it just stopped interacting. And then the frequency uh, changed because the universe was expanding. So what we are seeing today is kind of a relic of the universe at that time, at 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And if you study the cosmic microwave background with some more precision, you see that there's actually fluctuation which can be analyzed. It turns out that you can correlate, correlate those fluctuations, fluctuations of the energy density 380,000 years after Big Big Bang, with the presence of today's stars and galaxies and galaxy clusters. So those energy fluctuations, they served as seeds for the formation of galaxies and galaxy clusters quite interesting. Today we have about 400 of those photons, microwave photons, 
per square cubic centimeter. So it's quite busy environment around here. So like this little cube has about 400 of those photons. So this is a spectrum as well, but it's not just a monochromatic um, uh, background, but it's a spectrum which corresponds to this temperature distribution. All right. <clears throat> 